Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Who Won Wednesday. This is where we push and propagate the toxicity in the internet wrestling community, where we say, oh, you, you like AEW, you're a shill. You like NXT, you're a shill. Why is NXT oh, show? Why can't we just enjoy ooh. everything? Let's celebrate Let the, hatred the great flow. Win, uh, Wednesday night wrestling action. Let it flow. Create a uh, uh, foster an environment that's positive, healthy. What? Great discussion. This is wrestling. This is all about drawing lines in the sand mm, and not, not backing here, down. Not here. Not enjoying anything. No, I enjoy everything. <laughs> I hate it at all. Watch what you enjoy. <laughs> if you don't want what enjoy, don't watch it. All right, man. That's Larson, simple. tell us who do you think who do you think won last night? Should we do that or do you want to go you want to pit each match head to head to see which was better? I want I want you to tell me what you liked. All right. I'll tell you what I liked and then we'll do that. Okay, we're going to do that. Um, and and while if you go head to head match wise, AEW might have had match quality. I think overall, it, on balance for the two shows over the course of the two hours, I feel like it was a wash. Like maybe if you put them head to head, uh, AEW is consistently maybe a bit better. But that main event in NXT was killer. Um, as you mentioned before in the recap, takeover level stuff there. Um, and so if you if you say in ring action wash that's a push tie, then it comes down to the most defining moment of the show for AEW it's that brawl between Inner Circle and Cody and Nightmare Family and there's two really uh, indelible images from that is Cody sma uh, uh, ramming Jericho's face into the Dippin' Dots thing and then it's Jericho holding his ticket and sticking it to his forehead. Well, it was Co it was Cody putting his hand through the glass. That too. That, that was whole, the that, that was whole, the moment. There were right several there. moments. Yeah. None of them. None of those moments are as impactful, as enjoyable as what they were, as impactful, as iconic, as meaningful, as meaningful as potentially uh, 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 earth-shattering as Finn Balor uh, turning heel. Um, that's a potential sea change for what they can now do in NXT if they handle it right. Because of that, that one moment, I feel like, gives NXT the edge. Oh, shell. NXT takes the week. Oh, look at you wearing your Balor shirt. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a Devitt shill. Sure. Oh man, what a WWE shill. No, Devitt shill. All right, man. Well, I'm gonna break it down. You're right. Everything you said is absolutely correct. Uh, so yeah, if you if, if you well, you're, we're gonna look at the matches head to head. Yeah. In a moment from the start of both shows. Um, however, what we saw last night is something we've been begging for. Literally, Larson, for years, years. A, pre, uh, a Finn Balor heel turn. He shotgun kicked Johnny Gargano straight to hell. Uh, and it was an it was a shocking moment that everybody was talking about. Mm -hmm. Everybody was I mean, on Twitter, they were all antsy to get our reactions from it, our first reactions from it. And it was it was it was a, a just an absolute transcendent moment, possible moment of the year candidate right there. AEW, I think on a match-to-match -match basis, we're about to look at these, on a match-to-match -match basis, the match quality, I think, in AEW probably surpassed that of NXT until you hit that main event. That main event was potentially, I'm not going to say match of the year candidate, but it was probably a match of the year candidate. It's going to be on the, it's probably going to be on my top 10 list mm -hmm. uh, for the year. It was that damn good. It was, it was pretty darn good. so good. Um, that match by like just runaway was match of the night, and AEW had some really good matches. Mm -hmm. um, so I think yeah, if it wasn't for the Finn Balor turn, I probably would have given the edge to AEW yeah. simply because it was so damn enjoyable yeah. from the beginning to the end. I thought it was my favorite episode of AEW since it started, and it was so darn good uh, last night. Everybody won because both shows were absolutely killer. Yeah. And there was nothing, there was nothing that really fell flat. For me, there was one match in NXT that I wasn't huge on. But uh, but I thought both shows were fantastic. But you throw that Balor heel turn and it was just it was absolutely electric. It was great. It was it was it oh was my great. god, this is just, you know, you, you can't stop thinking about how great it was. Yep. Um so yeah, I think NXT won again. Let me double check. The check cleared from WWE. That's great because I'm nothing but a shill. You're not a shill. Let's go through these matches one by one really sure, quick. Sure, let's do that. Let's go ahead and just head to head. All right. Head to do head. It. Let's do it. Kicking off NXT, Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair. Kicking oh. off uh, AEW is a private party versus Lucha Bros. Oh, I mean, 
Mm. That one's kind of a toss up. I got to say it's a toss up, man. I mean, they're they're both really They really were both good actually matches. really creative matches. They were. They were. And they both told good stories. I mean, if if somebody came up to me and said, "Hey, which match?" Okay. Uh, if if Lacey, who doesn't watch wrestling, she's like, hey, show me a match. And I had to choose between these two. I'd probably go with the AEW match. It was more, it was just maybe a little more electric. Maybe it, it, a little more electric. It was flashier. Flashier. It was definitely flashier. But I think from a tor- uh, storytelling perspective, they're on par. Yeah. Uh, both matches told a, a, a good story. Both yeah. matches were exciting. Mm-hmm. Pretty darn creative and clever in, t- in terms of how they booked the match and, yeah. and went from sequence to move to sequence to move. Yeah. Um, I'd give the, age, the, the edge to AEW. Slight. Yeah. Slight. I'd, I'd give that. Slight. Edge. Slight. Slight. Next, over on NXT, we had Matt Riddle versus Cameron Grimes. On uh, Next over here on AEW, we had SCU taking on Dark Order. Matt Riddle and Cameron Grimes, they win. That oh, just a, just a phenomenal match. Nothing, taking nothing away from SCU. I think they're terrific. I'm not a huge Dark Order fan. Um, but Matt think, Riddle. I don't and, think a whole lot of people are. No, Matt Riddle and Cameron Grimes. How rude, Lars. Matt Riddle and Cameron it seemed Grimes. Like it seemed like they were on the trajectory to win those tag titles, and now they're not. Which match had a jackhammer in it? <laughs> well, Matt Riddle, I gave the, I gave the point no, to the I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that to give you shit. I'm just saying, like, we had a match that had a jackhammer. I know. It. And it didn't have killer. Goldberg in it, so that's something else. Sorry, one and one. So uh, next year in AEW, Joey Janela taking on Kenny Omega. Oh, this isn't even close. Breezango and Isaiah Scott, who I love Isaiah Scott. Yeah, Swerve's great. Versus the Forgotten Sons. I don't think this is close. Joey Janela versus This was a really Kenny fun Omega. match. And they didn't have to do any hardcore stuff. I know. It was just terrific. It, it was, was just a really terrific These two guys have match. great chemistry. They really do. Yeah. Uh, next, over on AEW, we had the Cody interview, the brawl between Inner Circle and Cody and the rest of the Nightmare family. What do we have over in NXT? Angel Garza versus Jack Gallagher. That was a fun match. However, I think uh, the most iconic moments of this particular bro- of AEW is from this particular segment. This was one of the more fun segments they've ever done, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So that's 2-1 AEW. Yeah. Next, uh, AEW, best friends taking on the Young Bucks. Uh, that was terrific, and as much as I liked this Tegan Knox Dakota Kai versus uh, Jessamyn Duke match and Marina Shafir, it was a match that had Marina Shafir in it. So uh, best. Also, it was, a ma- it was all a matter of like two minutes. It was super yeah, short. Yeah, I know, I know. That was a really fun match. It was tons Orange of fun. Cassidy was getting involved. Yeah, man. So AEW is now up three to one. I believe three to one. Uh, NXT. What's left on there? The main event: Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic versus. Roderick Strong. Um, I got two matches left over here. Jamie Hayter versus Britt Baker, and then the main event of AEW, Mox taking on Pac. That match was better than either of these. And both of them combined, yeah, yeah. for sure, absolutely. And, of course, he had Finn Balor yeah. you know, doing what he did. So, uh, so yeah, NXT, congratulations. We're going to send you out a prize of some Not sort. True. Maybe a, a gift card, perhaps. A fruit basket. Maybe. An edible like arrangement. That. You ever had an edible arrangement? Like edible underwear? No, edible arrangement is this the the bouquet of fruit. Oh, like a fruit basket. Yeah, but it's that it's made to look like a bouquet of flowers, but it's fruit. No. It's, no. it's delightful. Okay. What well, about cool. uh, chocolate dipped strawberries? Have you ever had any of those? Well yeah, those are amazing. Well they're good, yeah. Anyways, let's talk about ratings. All right. Before you annoy me too much. Where's uh, my air horn app on my phone? Okay, put that down. <laughs> uh, so I got these numbers from John Pollock on the Twitter, yeah. of course from Post Wrestling. They're terrific. Uh, and we have it at AEW once again. One, not surprising, they failed to reach one million viewers, uh, but they're still doing doing pretty well. They only lost about fifty thousand in the face of some pretty stiff competition. World Series and uh, night two of the yeah, NBA, yeah. But I think it was like night one of them being on TNT. Well, it was like, you know they have opening opening night that was on the twenty second, but then was it? It wasn't last night. No, the first first games were on the twenty second, but not everybody had a game the first night. Okay, yeah, like the Kings didn't have a game the first night. They had one last. They night. barely even showed up last night though. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, so AEW nine hundred sixty thousand, NXT six hundred ninety eight thousand. So just a hair under seven hundred thousand. Yeah, um, seems pretty obvious. That's going to be the floors. Yeah, because NXT only dropped about fourteen thousand. AEW, they, I mean, AEW might settle in around nine fifty. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, NXT, I'd be shocked if they didn't do better than seven hundred thousand next week. Yeah, because of the Finn Balor thing. Yeah. I think people are going to be tuning in for that. Um, and I think because it's still so early. Uh, I think that we're going to see, you know, like like always, if AEW can get some story pops 
you know, some big story beats. We're heading into full gear. There's still a lot of stuff that's going to settle. Yeah. Uh, this Young Bucks versus uh, uh, LA XLAX thing uh, is going to be pretty cool. Yeah, going they, got, that. they got a couple weeks to really kick that into high gear. Uh, all this pack, or full gear, Mox, Omega, Hangman stuff. They did announce that uh, Paige will be taking on Pac at full gear. Mm -hmm, yeah. The card for full gear looks great. And I, I also, I'm wondering how AEW creative will, will fall into place post full gear they've only really had a month to build to that pay-per-view mm -hmm. and i think they're really doing a really good job of it but i don't think this is what we're going to see in terms of uh, uh their usual creative because they're gonna have a larger window to tell these stories yeah given their quarterly pay-per-view cycle it seems mm -hmm. yeah um so but then that you know after full gear we'll get a better idea of how they're going to approach things in terms of, of telling stories both in the ring, which they do great now, but also incorporating more vignettes, promos, interviews, video packages, all that kind of stuff. And, of course, Wardlow. Oh, how could we forget the Wardlow? That's going to be... Hell, AEW wins because of Wardlow. <laughs> he had his own gym. <laughs> oh, no. It was all dramatically lit. And it was like a CrossFit gym, too. He had like the little running track thing. He had like that little, he had like a patch of grass in there or something where he just runs. How does that on. make it a CrossFit gym? Maybe that's where he lets his dog go pee. I've seen that at CrossFit places. You've been in a CrossFit place? Yeah. When? Uh, I was picking up, there was one next to uh, where my uh, kids do their cheer stuff. Mm. And I popped my head in there real quick. I was like, this is crazy stuff. I don't feel like I'm in good enough shape to even start doing CrossFit yet. Oh, there's levels for everybody. I understand man. that, but yeah. I feel like there's a. I mean, you'd start at the beginner's level. I know. But yeah. I'm you you'd. you'd Get there pretty quick, man. I think you'd be okay. There's, I've thought about you see it. all sorts of fat asses doing CrossFit. <laughs> if they can do it, you can do it. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so I, yeah, that's it. So yeah, what NXT could they do? One. I think that what next week? Next week, what could NXT do to an AEW do to generate another iconic moment? NXT would be something like this. It'd be Balor going full Prince Devitt. If he does that, if he starts roughing up, if he if his if he, starts, man. Hey, if he starts roughing up Kathy Kelly, <laughs> because he used to do that, but they were like the, you know they're the male uh, uh, yeah, yeah, reporters yeah. there in New Japan. He'd bring him in, rough him up, him and Carl Anderson. Yeah, if he were to rough up, uh, I don't know if they brought Radzi over or something. I don't know. Can't really do that with Kathy Kelly. That's no, messed up. No, it just messed up. Nigel. Yeah. If he goes over to Nigel, grabs him and does this. Or Mora. Or Mora. Oh God. Yeah. Mora would be freaked out. Um, AEW Jericho puts Cody's head through a plate glass window. That'd be good. Something to harken back to when he put uh, Shawn Michaels' face through a TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, that could be, good, be good stuff. So uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see how both companies uh, respond next mm -hmm. week. Uh, and of course, y'all can respond in the comments. And remember, the more toxic, the better. No, That's positive, what we want. positive, 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 positive. Really? This is the community, the environment we've spent years fostering, a positive environment. Let's keep it positive. All right. Fine. We don't want to. No, we got no patience, no time for hey, toxicity. Look, man, here's the thing. In just, our city. Just be cool, okay? Just yes, be just cool. be cool. If you want to be silly about the negativity in the comments, I'm all about that. Just be cool. Yeah, just be cool. Anyways, if you want to accuse, accuse us of ripping off other people, like our good friend Brian Zane, feel free to do that. Anyways, that's it for the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.